Hello everyone, welcome to section 4. This is calculator part. In this section you were given 38 questions and 55 minutes. In this section you can use either graphic calculator or scientific calculator. Let's start. Question number 1. John runs at different speeds at part of his training program. The graph shows his target heart rate at different times during his workout. On which interval is the target heart rate strictly increasing, then strictly decreasing? So here we are going to interpret the graph. What we are looking for is something is strictly increasing and then decreasing. As you can see on the graph, this is increasing and then strictly decreasing just after summit. Here it is increasing some constant and then decreasing, increasing constant speed and then decreasing. So this is the interval we are interested in. So 40 to 60 is the answer. This is just simple graph interpretation. Number two. If y equals to kx, where k is a constant, and y equals to 24, when x equals to 6, what's the value of y when x equals to 5? Let's solve this question by tabling. So let's make xy table. So we were given the relation between x and y. When x is 6, y is 24, given information and they would like to know what is the value of y when x is 5. So you can see the relation here. x is 6, y is 24. So 4 times enlarged. So this has to be the same ratio. Or you can solve algebraically. y equals to kx and we know that k is the constant here. We need to know that constant. y is 24 given k is the constant value and x is 6. So here if you divide both sides by 6, you can find k as 4. So since we know now k is 4, we can apply again. What's the value of y? We know k is 4 when x is 5. And 4 times 5 is 20. So the answer is 20. Or you can see the relation from the table. Question number 3. In the figure above, lines L and M are parallel. So lines L and M are parallel. Two lines. And also S and T are parallel these two lines are also parallel. If the measure of angle 1 is 35 degree, what's the measure 2? So they want to know this angle here. Here we're going to use the parallel lines theorem. If two lines are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent, which means they are the same angles, Alternate exterior angles are congruent and corresponding angles are congruent as well. So from here to here, so we can compare these two blue lines because they are parallel. We cannot directly compare blue line and orange line. So if this line, if this angle is 35 degree, then this angle is also 35 degree. Why? Because they are alternate exterior angles. Let me draw the shape of alternate exterior angles. Angle here and angle here are alternate exterior angles. Or symmetrically angle here and here are alternate exterior angles. And alternate exterior angles are congruent, which means they are the same angle. Now we can compare two orange lines. Okay. This angle is 35 degree. Let's use the alternate interior angles this time. So 
angle here is also 35 degree. Alternate interior angles look like this. Angle inside, interior angle, and here. Symmetrically, angle here and here are alternate interior angles. And alternate interior angles are also congruent. So this is also 35 using alternate interior angles. Now we know that angle 2 measure and 35 degree are on, on the same straight line. So angle 2 plus 35 is supplementary. So measure of angle 2 plus 35 degree is 180 degree because it's on the straight line. So angle 2 is 180 minus 35, which is 145. Let's go to question number 4. If 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14, 10 more than 14, what is the value of 8x? So here we are going to solve for x and plug in here, or directly we are going to make up 8x and find the value. So let's simplify. 16 plus 4x is equal to 24. Let's subtract 16 on both sides. So we are going to have 4x is equal to 8. Now we can solve for x and then plug in here, or we can make here 8x. So what makes here 8x? If I multiply whole equation by 2, I'm going to obtain 8x. 2 times 4x is 8x, 2 times 8 is 16. So now we know that 8x is equal to 16. Okay, next question. Number 5. Which of the following graphs best shows a strong negative association between D and T. So what we are looking for is negative association and strong. Here in this graph we see that dots are all over everywhere like rectangular shape. So this is the picture of no correlation, no correlation picture. Like ice cream sales and car sales, they have no correlation. This is the picture of constant correlation. One of the variable is increasing, the other one is still the same. So this is the constant correlation or constant association. Here both increasing. As D is increasing, T is also increasing. So this is positive relation or positive correlation. It is like, as the temperature is going higher, the ice cream sales are going higher. If two variables are going same direction at the same time, if they are increasing at the same time, or if they are decreasing at the same time, this is positive relation. Here, the slope is going down. As one of the variable is increasing, as you go to the right, D is increasing and t is decreasing so this is negative association and as the dots come closer to each other as the dots are more dense it is stronger association you can consider this like the slope of y equals to mx plus b so this is the negative slope this is the positive slope. Question number six. A hospital stores one type of medicine in two decagram containers. Based on the information given in the box above, how many one milligram doses are in one two decagram container? So we would like to know how many one milligram do we have in two decagrams? You can think this question like how many 5 cents do I have in $20 bill? 
to be able to do this question I need to use the same units I need to convert make the units same then division so five cents let's convert everything into cents twenty dollars we know that one dollar is hundred cents so I multiply this twenty by hundred so twenty became two thousand divided by five and it's going to be 400 now we know that we have 400 405 cents in $20 or you can think that how many how many dimes or nickels do you have in some number of dollars you need to make the same unit and then do the division now using the same logic how many one milligrams do we have in two decagram we need to use the same units convert first we're gonna convert from decagram to gram so one decagram is 10 grams so first we multiply by 10 now it became gram And we were given that 1 gram is 1000 milligram. Now we're going to multiply by 1000. So it became 20,000 divided by 1. And they are both milligram now. Now it is 20,000. Now we know that we have 20,000 counts of 1 milligram container in 2 decagrams. Next question. Number 7. The number of rooftops with solar panel installations in five cities is shown in the graph above. If the total number of installations is 27,500, what is an appropriate label for the vertical axis of the graph? So this is the vertical axis of the graph, and we are going to decide whether it is counted in tens, hundreds, thousands, or ten thousands. Let's count. This is histogram, and you should know how to read the histogram. So let's count the rooftops with solar panels. We have nine units here. We have five units here. We have six units here. We have four units here. And we have three and a half units here. And altogether, nine plus five is 14, plus six is 20, plus four is 24, plus three and a half is 27.5. This 27.5 is representing the total number of solar panels on the rooftops. So 27.5 is representing 27,500. If I multiply this number by 10, I don't obtain this. If I multiply this number by 100, I still don't obtain this. But if I multiply this number by 1000, I do obtain 27,500. So this should be expressed in thousands. Question number eight. For what value of n is absolute value of n minus 1 plus 1 equal to 0? Let's set up the equation and solve. Step 1. Subtract 1 on both sides. Now we obtain absolute value of n minus 1 equals negative 1. At this point, you're going to stop and ask to yourself, can absolute value be equal to negative value? No. Think like this. x can be negative or positive. Here, x could be negative 5. We execute positive 5 x could be positive 5, we still execute as positive 5, but no matter what it is, you cannot obtain negative value. So there is no such value of n, because absolute value cannot be equal to negative value. So at this point you're going to stop and then sign this. Next. Question number 9. The speed of a sound wave in air depends on the air temperature. 
The formula above shows the relationship between a, the speed of sound wave, in feet per second, and t, the air temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Which of the following expresses the air temperature in terms of the speed of a sound wave? So we were given the function and we are going to solve t in terms of everything. So our function is a is equal to 1052 plus 1.08 t. Our first step is to subtract 1052 on both sides. So we are going to obtain a minus 1052 is equal to 1.08 t. Now we need t alone because we are solving in terms of t in terms of everything. So we divide by 108 then t is equal to a minus 1052 over 1 1.08. So this is the answer. And it is this. Next. Number 10. At which of the following air temperatures will be the speed of a sound wave be closest to 1000 feet per second? So here in this question, they would like to know what the air temperature will be when the speed of the sound is 1000. We already created the function in the previous question, the temperature function. Now in the temperature function, we are going to plug in the speed of the sound wave, which is given 1000. So 1000 minus 1052 divided by 1 1.08. This is the calculator part, so you don't have to sweat for doing manually. Just go to your calculator. 1000 minus 1052 divided by 1 1.08 will give you negative 48.14. Negative 48.14 is the number closest to B. Number 11. Which of the following numbers is not a solution of the inequality? 3x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 4x minus 3. So let's solve for x and see it. Let's subtract 3x on both sides. And simultaneously, let's add 3 on both sides. Since we accumulated x's on right hand side, we need to collect numbers on the left hand side, or vice versa. So you don't have to go two step. 3x, 3x cancels, 3, 3 cancels. So this is going to be negative 2 greater than or equal to x. So we know that negative 2 is greater than or equal to x. Let's graph it on the number line negative 1, 0. So 2 is greater than equal to, so we're going to bubble the circle because it is inclusive, because greater than or equal to, and we're going to go to the left hand side, because negative 2 is greater than x. So this is the solution set. So negative 1 is not inclusive in the solution set. So this is the answer. Question number 12. Based on the histogram above of the following, which is the closest to the average, which is arithmetic mean, number of the seeds per apple? Again, you need to know how to read the histogram. You were given histogram of 12 apples. First, we're going to find the arithmetic mean or the average. So three apples have, two apples have the number of three seeds. So two times three is six. So we have six seeds here. Four apples each has five seeds. So we have 20 seeds here. 
one apple has six seeds inside so six seeds here two apples have seven seeds each inside so 14 seeds together and three apples has nine seeds each which is three times nine 27 if you add them up 27 plus 14 is 31 41 47 67 73 and 73 divided by 12 will give me the average seed because we have 12 apples counted and 73 divided by 12 73 divided by 12 will be 6.08 so the average is 6.08 which is closest to 6 question number 13 A group of 10th grade students responded to a survey that asked which math course they were currently enrolled in. The survey data were broken down as shown in the table above. Which of the following categories accounts for approximately 19% of all the survey respondents? This is the frequency table. In the frequency table, the data is given either in numbers or in percentages. So we were given in numbers and we are going to interpret in percentages of these cells. And in the two-way or frequency table, this is always the total. And we are going to find the percentage to the whole, all survey respondents. Okay, and we're going to find which one out of these cells is closest to 19%. So x over 310 will be equal to 19%. And you can express 19% either 0 0.19 or you could express it 19 over 100. Since you have a calculator, 0 0.19 will be easier. We're solving for x, so you're going to do cross multiplication. So x is equal to 310 times 0 0.19, which is going to be 310 times 0 0.19. It's going to be 58.9. And 58.9 is the number closest to this number. Now we're going to interpret which cell is this. This is the cell of people who are taking geometric course and they are males so male who are taking geometry is the answer question number 14 the table above lists the length to the nearest inch of a random sample of 21 brown bullhead fish the outlier measurement of 24 inches is an error of the mean median and range of the values listed which will change the most if the 24 inch measurement is removed from the data. So we have a data here already listed in the increasing order. Now it's easier to see. And we're going to see if we remove the outlier out of mean median range, which one will change the most. Here obviously the range will change most because we are changing the outlier. What is the definition of range? Range is the largest number minus smallest number. So before we remove, our range is 24 minus 8, which is 16. After we remove, 16 will be the highest number now. And it's going to be 16 minus 8. And from 8 to 16, there is a big jump. So after we remove, the range drops to 8 from 16. But mean and median does not change a lot. Even if they, here you can, you should start from the range. And if you see that range is changing this dramatically, you don't need to solve for mean and median. And how do we solve for mean and median? For mean, we add them up all and divide by the number of the data. For the median, we find the number literally in the middle. Let's go to number 15. 
The graph above displays the total cost, C in dollars of renting a boat for 8 hours. What does C intercept represents in the graph? C intercept is like our Y intercept in Y equals to MX plus B. And this Y intercept in real life means the initial value, initial cost. So the initial cost of renting boat is the C intercept. And M is the slope. In real life, slope is the rate, speed, increasing rate or decreasing rate. Y is the total, in real life total. And X is the variable. In real life, whatever the story is, that's the variable. Let's go to number 16. Which of the following represents the relationship between H and C? This time they want us to make the equation like y equals to mx plus b equation. But we are going to create C equals to number H plus some C intercept. For this we need the slope and we need the y intercept. We already know the y intercept from the graph. It is 5. So they don't have y-intercept here, they don't have y-intercept here, so we eliminate them. Now we need to find the slope. So you have two options to find the slope. Either slope is equal to rise over run, or slope is equal to delta y over delta x, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You might be tempted to use rise over run directly because this is the graph, but you need to observe that rise is given in scale, but run is not given in scale. From 0 to 1, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 gaps. So actually it is divided by 4, 1 fourth. Each, each line is 1 fourth. You can see here the relation, but it is always safer to use delta y over delta x. So let's pick up two clear points. Let's pick up this point. This point is 0, 0,5. X coordinate is 0, Y coordinate is 5. Let's use this point. Here X coordinate is 1 and Y coordinate is 8. So we can apply delta Y over delta X. Let's call this is x1, then this is y1, this is x2, then this is y2. So it's going to be 8 minus 5 over 1 minus 0, which is equal to 3. So our slope is 3. So our equation is y equals to, or here h, see here is c, c equals to 3h plus 5. So the answer is c. But if you count rise over run, rise is 1, 1, 2, 3, and run is 1, 2, 3, 4, 3 over 4, and this is actually wrong because run is not given to scale. Let's go to question number 17. The complete graph of the function f is shown in the xy plane above. For what value of x? is the value of f of x at its minimum. So this is the point where the graph is at the minimum point and they would like to know the x coordinate of this point because what value of x is the value of the minimum. So let's let's find on the graph. This is our origin. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 is the x coordinate of this point. So this point is actually negative 3 comma 1, 2, negative 2. And we are interested in the x coordinate. Number 18. In the xy plane, if 0, 0 is a solution to the system of inequalities above, which of the following relationships between A and B must be true? So let's solve for A and let's solve for B and then compare. That's going to be easier. So y is less than negative x plus a. Solve for a. Add x on both sides. So we're going to obtain x plus y is less than a. And on the second equation, let's call this first equation. And on the second equation, 
we have y is greater than x plus b. Let's subtract b on both sides. And this time we're going to have y minus x is greater than b. So we obtain this and we obtain this to compare. Now we can plug in the solution set. So our solution is 0 comma 0 for both equations. Here x coordinate is 0, y coordinate is 0. If you plug in those two values, this is 0, this is 0. 0 plus 0 is still 0. So 0 is less than a. And here 0, 0 again, we plug in the same solution since this point solves both equations and then we obtain 0 is greater than b. If 0 is less than a, that means a is the positive number. And if 0 is greater than b, that means b is a negative number. So now we can compare this. If a is positive and if b is negative, a is always going to be greater than b. So this is the answer. Question number 19. A food truck sells salads for $6.50 each and drinks for $2 each. So we have $6.50 for salads and $2 drinks. The food truck's revenue from selling a total of 209 salads and drinks together in one day was $836.50. How many salads were sold that day? So we're going to create the second equation, drinks plus salads. Let's say salads from, salads from drinks. So we're going to create the second equation, salads plus drinks, our total 209. This is going to be our number equation. And our value equation is 836.5. Now we're going to solve the systems of equations. You can either use your graphing calculator or use algebraically. I'm going to solve here algebraically and then show how you can use graphically. Here let's use the elimination method. Since we need to know how many salads sold, we are solving for the variable s, so let's eliminate the variable d. Let's multiply the second equation by negative 2. We did not change the first equation, 650s plus 2d is equal to 836.5 and negative 2 times s is negative 2s and negative 2 times d is negative 2d and negative 2 times 209 is negative 418 2d cancels each other this is going to be 450 s is equal to 836 minus 418 836.5 minus 418 will give us 418.5 418.5 now we're going to solve for s then we are going to divide both sides by 450 then here s will be divided by 450 then we're going to obtain 93 so 93 is the answer so if you're solving for variable s then eliminate d if you were solving for variable d then eliminate s this is algebraic solution you could also use substitution method but graphing method is the fastest here go to your graphing calculator and write type both equations you obtained we obtained 650 and x instead of salads plus 2y for drinks and they were equal to 836.5 is our first equation and our second equation was x plus y was equal to 209 you might not see it on on your graph so you're gonna track your graph or you're gonna go to table or make it smaller zoom in zoom out okay now we see it and see the intersection in the intersection x coordinate is your x variable and y coordinate is your y variable since we were solving for the x variable so it's 93 
Okay, let's go to question number 20. Alma bought a laptop computer at a store that gave a 20% discount of its original price. The total amount she paid to the cashier was P$, dollars, including an 8% sales tax on the discounted price. Which of the following represents the original price of the computer in terms of P? So let's create the function. She bought an item, let's call the item X, 20% off. So buying anything 20% off means you're paying the 80%. So we multiply the item by 0 0.8 because 0 0.8 is 80%. And 20% off means you're paying 80%. Go that way. And on the discounted price, she pays the sales tax on the discounted price. Times 8% sales tax. How do we express 8%? 8% 8 is 0 0.08. But since this is the tax, we're going to be adding 1 plus 0 0.08. Let's clean this up. So P is equal to this. So P is equal to 0.8x times 1.08. So this is the function that models how much she's going to pay. Now we're going to solve for x in terms of P. So 0.8x and 1.08 is in multiplication form, so we can divide both sides by 0.8 times 1.08, 0.8, 1.08, then we can, so we can isolate x. Then x will be equal to p over 0.8 times 1.08. So it's, this is going to be the... Question number 21. The data in the table above were produced by sleep researchers studying the number of dreams people recall when asked to record their dreams for one week. Group X consisted of 100 people who observed early bedtimes and group Y consisted of 100 people who observed later bedtimes. If a person is chosen at random from those who recalled at least one dream, at least one dream, what is the probability that the person belonged to group Y? So let's mark first of all people who has recalled at least one dream, starting from here to here. People who recall none of the dreams are not inclusive because that's not our research group. At least one dream or more. So out of this group, we are trying to find the probability of people who belong to group Y. So probability is the sum of these numbers over total number of the research. So 11 plus 68 out of 11 plus 68 plus 28 plus 57. So 11 plus 68 is 79. So this is eliminated, this is eliminated. And we know that this number is greater than 100. So it's going to be 164, but make sure with your calculator. So this is going to be the answer. Question number 22. Which of the following best approximate the average rate of change in the annual budget for agriculture, natural resources in Kansas from 2008 to 2009. So 2008 to 2010, we are interested in finding the average rate of change of this horizontal group. Average rate of change means slope. And slope can be found using delta y over delta x. So Delta y, which is y1, y2, or x1, x2, as you label. So we have four cells here. x1, y1, 
x2, y2. 488, 106 minus 358, 708 over 2010 minus 2008. So let's use the calculator here. You're going to go to your calculator. You're going to type 488, 106 minus 358, 708 divided by 2010 minus 2008 is 2. So we're going to obtain 64,699, which is almost 65,000. It's going to question number 23. Of the following, which program's ratio of its 2007 budget to its 2010 budget is closest to the human resources program's ratio of its 2007 budget to 2010 budget. So we're going to take the ratio of human resources of 2007 to 2010. The order given is important. So we're going to take the ratio 2007 to 2010. So we're going to divide 4 million to 5 million. And we're going to obtain the ratio here. And then we're going to compare it with agriculture natural resources ratio and then education ratio and highways and transportation ratio and public safety ratio to see which one is closest to here okay so first we're going to divide 4 million something to 5 million something so it's going to be 4 million 0 51 0 50 divided by 5 million 921 379 so we're going to obtain 0 0.68 let's go ahead and write down 0 0.68 so this is the number that we are looking for closest to let's start with the agriculture so here 373.904 divided by divided by 488.106 so we obtain 0 0.76 so this is 0 0.76 let's go to second one we're going to divide 2 million something to 3 million something so 2 million 164 607 divided by 3008 036 so we're going to obtain 0 0.71 let's do highways and transportation okay 1468 482 divided by 177 3893 so 0 0.82 And finally, public safety, which is 263, 463 divided by 464, 233, we obtain 0 0.56. So out of these numbers, these two are closest. So education is the answer. Let's go to question number 24. Which of the following is an equation of a circle in the xy plane with center 0, 4 and a radius with endpoint 4 over 3, 5? So for this we need to know the equation of the circle. x minus h, the quantity squared, plus y minus k, the quantity squared equals to r squared, is the equation of the circle, where h comma k is the center and r is the radius we were given center so we can plug in center in this equation so 
x coordinate is 0 so this is h this is k and this is 4 so our new equation will be x minus 0 the quantity squared plus y minus 4 the quantity squared equals to r squared if we clean up this is going to be x squared plus y minus 4 squared equals to r squared so from this we can eliminate this and this now we need to know what the radius is because we need to decide whether this or that is correct the another information given is we were given the end point of the radius from center the end point this is the end point and it is 4 over 3 comma 5 and we know the center is 0 comma 4 if we know the length of this radius we can directly plug in the equation and we can use here the distance formula so the distance formula is y2 minus y1 the quantity squared plus x2 minus x1 the quantity squared so we're going to take the difference of the x and y coordinates so this is x1 this is y1 this is x2 this is y2 so we're going to get 5 minus 4 quantity squared plus 4 over 3 minus 0 the quantity squared so here 5 minus 4 is 1 1 squared is 1 and 4 over 3 minus 0 is 4 over 3 and if we square this fraction we're going to get 16 over 9 and everything is still in the radical sign now we're going to add 1 plus 16 over 9 you can express 1 as 9 over 9 so 16 plus 9 is 25 over 9 now we need to take this outside of the radical sign so 25 square root of 9 you can separate it so this is going to be 5 this is going to be 3 this is our radius so the length of radius is 5 over 3 so this is the answer for the equation of the circle question number 25 the equation above expresses the approximate height h in meters of a ball T seconds after it's launched vertically upward from the ground with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second after approximately how many seconds will the ball hit the ground so the function is given this is negative quadratic equation which will look like this and they are interested in the point where the object hits the ground which means we are going to find the x-intercept so this x2 we're going to find the second x-intercept the object is going upwards and falling down hitting the ground so this is graphical interpretation you can solve this question either algebraically or graphically because you have graphing calculator as well I'm going to show both let's solve for t whenever the object is on the ground the height of the object is zero so we can plug in the y component as zero negative 4.9 t squared plus 25t is equal to zero now we're going to solve for t factor out t here you're going to have negative 4.9 t plus 25 is equal to zero here this means t is either equal to 0 or this factor is equal to 0 so subtract 25 on both sides so negative 4.9 t is equal to 25 negative 25 and t is equal to negative 25 divided by negative 4.9 then you're gonna use your calculator so 25 divided by 4.9 so you're gonna obtain 5.10 so at the 5.10 second 
the object is on the floor. So this is the answer. Let's solve the same question graphically. You can go to your graphing calculator and then you can directly type the function given. So negative 4.9x squared plus 25x is equal to 0. So this is going to be your quadratic equation. And if you zoom out, if you zoom to the graph and check the second x-intercept, either graphically you can trace or you can go to table. You can go to table whenever your y component is 0. What is the x component? That's what you're going to check. So it's 5.10. And it confirms our answer. Question number 26. Katarina is a botanist studying the production of pears by two types of pear trees. She noticed that type A trees produce 20% more pears than type B trees did. So as we are reading, let's table it. So we have type B pear trees and type A. We don't know how many type B is producing, let's call it X. But we know that type A is produced 20% more than type B. So 20% more than that means 1.2 times X. Based on Katarina's observation, if the type A trees produced 144 pairs, how many pairs did the type B produce? Since type B is, type A is one, 20% more than type A, if I divide this number by 20%, 1.2, which is 20% more, then I can find this. So 144 divided by 1.2 will give me the answer, 120. So this is going to be 120 if I divide this by 1.2. You can also approach this question this way. You don't know how many type B is producing, so call it 100. Then type A is producing 20% more than type B, which is 120. And if type A has 144 now, how many, let's call it X, type B is producing? So you can take the ratio of this and then apply here. So ratio of 120 to 100 which means type A to type B is 1.2. Then 144 over X, 144 over X, type A to type B. Now we know the ratio is 1.2. So here to solve for X, multiply, cross multiply, and divide by 1.2. So X here will be 144 divided by 1.2 which is 120. So if you can't set up the equation directly, as in the blue we have written, then you can assume type B is 100, then take the ratio and then find at the second step. Question number 27. A square field measures 10 by 10 meters. 10 students each mark off a randomly selected region of the field. Each region is square and has length of 1 meter and no two regions overlap. The students count the earthworms contained in the soil to a depth of 5 cm beneath the ground's surface in each region. The results are shown in the table below. Which of the following is a reasonable approximation of the number of earthworms to a depth of 5 cm beneath the ground's surface in the entire field? So let's try to understand this question. Let me simulate the question here. So in the question, we have an area. And this area is sliced into, this area is 10 by 10 meters. 10 meter by 10 meter. And it is sliced into 100 regions. And each region is 1 by 1 meter. And out of these 100 regions, 10 regions randomly selected. Let's say region A, 
region B, region C, region D, E, F, G, H, here until J, I, J. So 10 regions are randomly selected. And those 10 regions are given in the table. 107 earthworms, 147 earthworms, 146 earthworms, 135 earthworms, 149 earthworms, 141, 150, 154, 176, 166. And they would like us to find which of the following is a reasonable approximation. So to be able to approximate the average number of the earthworms, we are going to add them up that we are going to obtain 1471 if you add all those numbers using your calculator and divide it by 10, you're going to obtain 147.1. That's the average. But we know that this each cell here is representing one hundredth of the total. Because all of them is the total and each cell is representing one hundredth of the total. So I need to multiply this number by hundred. So 147.1 times hundred will be 14,710. So this is the reasonable approximation for the average number. So this question is a little bit tricky. If you directly use 147, it is not representing the whole. It's representing just as 10 cells. But each cell is representing 100th of the total region, which is 10 meter by 10 meter. So this is the number we are going to use. So it is closest to 15,000. So 15,000 is the number. Question number 28. If the system of inequalities y is greater than or equal to 2x plus 1 and y is greater than 1 half x of minus 1 is graphed in the xy plane above, which quadrant contains no solution to the system? For this, you can use directly your graphing calculator. If you don't want to do that, you can do it manually by hand. It, it is going to be also solving, but let's use graphing here. So we are going to graph these two inequalities on the graphing calculator. Let's do that. Our first equation is y is greater than or equal y is greater than or equal to 2x plus 1. This is this inequality and the second inequality is y is greater than one half x minus one. So we graphed it. The solution for this inequality set is this overlap here. So this, this overlap from here to here is the solution set. So we have no solution on the quadrant 4. This is quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, quadrant 4. So the answer is the quadrant 4, which has no solution. Or if you can't graph them, you can do algebraically. You have to make xy plane. So you're going to graph 2x plus 1, plus 1 is the y-intercept, and then 2x is approximately this positive slope. y is greater than or equal to 2x plus 1, and you need to, you need to scan above because y is greater than. And then second equation will be, let's use different color, second equation is 1 half x minus 1, negative 1 is here, y-intercept. And then 1 half x is almost like this. So this is y is greater than 1 half x minus 1. 
and solution set is still above because y is greater than and here as you can see the overlap is on quadrant 1 quadrant 2 quadrant 3 but you don't see any any overlap on quadrant 4 so you can also do it algebraically question number 29 for a polynomial px the value of p of 3 is negative 2 which of the following must be true about p of x our options are x minus 5 is a factor x minus 2 is a factor x plus 2 is a factor the remainder when p of x is divided by x minus 3 is 2 we cannot directly verify if the factor is negative x minus 5 x minus 2 or x plus 2 using this information but we can verify whether the remainder is negative 2 or not when it is divided by x minus 3 using the remainder theorem let's do that first so we have some polynomial which is p of x and whenever this polynomial is divided by x minus 3 we are going to obtain some whole number q of x plus we are going to obtain the remainder over x minus 3 you can consider this like 21 divided by 4 is equal to we have some whole part which is 5 5 times 4 is 20 plus we have remainder 1 and over 4 1 fourth so you can you can make it look like this now we're going to solve for r and see whether it is negative 2 or not if we can verify it is negative 2 using the information then that's going to be the answer if not then we have to search which factor could be okay so let's multiply whole equation by x minus 3 so x minus 3 multiplied by the first term gives us just p of x and x minus 3 multiplied by the second term gives us x minus 3 times q of x plus x minus 3 multiplied by the third term gives us just r because they cancel they cancel okay now we were given a point so let's plug in this point to see whether it is satisfying the equation or not so p of 3 is negative 2 means 3 comma negative 2 is the point on this polynomial so x is 3 y is negative 2 so p of x means y so this is negative 2 and x was 3 given here q of x plus r 3 minus 3 is 0 and 0 times q of x is 0 and we can see here r is equal to 2 bingo so this verifies that so d is the answer question number 30 which of the following is an equivalent form of the equation of the graph shown in the xy plane above from which the coordinates of vertex a can be identified as constants in the equation so we were given the equation of this quadratic and from this equation from this graph how which of them can identify as the coordinates of the vertex which is point a so so we have to complete the square and find the vertex form of the quadratic equation that verifies the fastest okay so x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals to 0 so x squared minus 2x we're going to complete the square so our template is plus some thing minus 15 minus something equals to 0 so we separate the x terms group it and rewrite the rest of the equation and we put extra square here and extra square here which means we are going to add some number 
and subtract same amount of the number so we are not going to change the value of the equation it's like this I'm giving you five dollars and getting five dollars back so I didn't give you anything in value okay so we're going to take the half of the middle term so half of the middle term is one and we're going to square it which is still one one squared is one and we're going to add one and subtract one and then simplify this equation then it's going to be our vertex form so x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 16 equals to 0 here in the middle what you obtain is the perfect square trinomial and perfect square trinomial you can factor it out by heart x minus the square root of the third term whatever the sign here you see will be in middle the quantity squared and then we have negative 16 here equals to 0 now this is our vertex form now let's see which one is this answer D so this is the vertex form where you can directly identify the vertex which is H comma K negative H comma K let's say negative H comma K is the vertex which means positive 1 because negative negative 1 is the positive 1 comma K is the negative 16 as it is so 1 comma 16 will be the vertex yes this point is 1 comma 16 we knew it it was 1 or almost 1 and we knew that it was between negative 15 and 20 this is negative but you cannot assume just you have to go ahead and complete the square you cannot assume in the graph this is negative 16 this point number 31 uh, okay so we finished the multiple choice part now we're going to go to grid in part we're going to find the answer there are no options here and we're going to go ahead and write in the answer white can hask at least 12 dozen ears of corn per hour and at most 18 dozen ears of corn per hour so this guy can hask at least 12 and at most 18 dozen of ears of corn per hour okay based on this information what is the possible amount of time in hours that it could take white to husk 72,000 ears of corn so here in this question we're going to divide 72 by 12 to be able to see at least how much how, how many hours he's supposed to work so 72 divided by 12 is 6 so 6 hours the slowest and 72 divided by 18 is 4 the fastest so he can work between 4 hours and 8 hours so you should you supposed to grid in here number five because any hour between four and six I mean they are inclusive you can write four you can write six as well all three answers are accepted so don't take risk just directly because what is a possible amount of time one possible amount of time in so four to six hours so you're gonna go to your answer sheet you're gonna write like five hours and then bubble in five if you don't bubble in the computer can't read your answer question number 32 the posted weight limit for a covered wooden bridge in Pennsylvania is 6,000 pounds this means I can carry on the bridge maximum 6,000 pounds so whatever I carry on this bridge cannot exceed 6,000 pounds everything else has to be less than or equal to 6,000 
a delivery truck that is carrying X identical boxes. So we have X identical box. So this is the number of the box. X is representing the number of the box. Each weighing 14 pounds. So 14 X. We'll pass over the bridge. If the combined weight of the empty delivery truck and its driver is 4,500 pounds, what is the maximum possible value of X that will keep the combined weight of the truck driver and boxes below the bridge posted weight limit? So we're going to solve for X in this inequality to see how many boxes we can carry. Okay, subtract 4,500 on both sides. So 14x is equal to 1,500. And if you use your calculator, 1,500 divided by 14 will give you 107.14. So x is equal to 107.14. So we can carry this many boxes maximum. You can carry 107 box, but you cannot carry 108 box, then the bridge collapses. So one possible answer or maximum number of one possible value is 107. So you're going to go to your answer sheet and then you're going to write 107 here and you're going to bubble in 107 clearly and correctly. So be very careful at this part. So you find the correct answer, you, you do all the work, but you bubble in wrong. Then your answer doesn't count, unfortunately, because this part is read by the computer. So question number 33. The number of portable media players sold worldwide Question number 33. According to the line graph above, the number of portable media players sold in 2008, okay, here, is what fraction of the number sold in 2011? So this number to that number, we're going to write the fraction. So it's going to be 100. 100 media sold over 160 sold. Fraction means take the ratio. So it's going to be 100 over 160. 10 over 16, which is 5 over 8. So 5 over 8 is the answer. Or you can divide it directly and you're going to get 0 0.625. 5 over 8 is good. So go to your answer sheet right here, 5, division sign, 8. So 5 divided by 8. Find the correct numbers and bubble it. Next. A local television station sells time slots for programs in 30 minutes intervals. If the station operates 24 hours per day, every day of the week, what is the total number of 30 minutes time slots the station can sell for Tuesday and Wednesday? So for Tuesday and Wednesday in these two days, you have 24 hours plus 24 hours. So you have total 48 hours to sell. And this 48 hour sales is sold in 30 minutes intervals. So 48 hours divided by, so this is hour, you need to convert this into hour. So 30 minute is half half an hour. So you're going to obtain 96. So you can sell 96 30 minutes intervals. You're going to go to your answer sheet. You're going to write here 96 and you're going to find number 9 here. You're going to find number 6 here and you're good. Question number 35. A dairy farmer uses a storage silo that is in the shape of the right circular cylinder above. If the volume of the silo is 27 pi cubic yard, what's the diameter of the base of the cylinder in yards? So 
we're going to write the volume formula of cylinder. This is in the reference sheet. Pi r squared times h. It's in the reference sheet, but if, if you see any shape that the volume is not given, you can, you can use this method. The base area times the height of any 3D shape gives you the volume. So the area of the circle is pi r squared and times h is the height. But you're going to find it here in the answer reference sheet above. Okay, let's solve this question. Here we are solving for the diameter. Okay, volume is given 72 pi. So instead of v, we're going to write 72 pi. It is given. Pi r squared, we don't know the radius. So we're going to keep it as it is. And h is given 8. We're going to solve for r. Divide both sides by 8 pi. 8 pi. So 8 and pi cancels on the right hand side. And the r squared will be equal to pi cancels pi. 72 divided by 8 is 9. R squared is 9, then R squared, R squared is 9, then R is square root of 9, which is 3. If the diameter is 3, I mean, if the radius is 3, the diameter is 2 times radius. So 2 times radius will give me the, the diameter, which is going to be 6. So you're going to go to here. The trick is you find 3 and directly you bubble in 3, you're lost. No, you're finding the diameter. And you should know the relation between diameter and radius. Diameter is the double of the radius. So you're going to double the answer. So the answer is 6. You're going to go right here. 6 and then bubble in 6. Next question. Question number 36. 36. For what value of x is the function h above is undefined? Whenever the denominator is equal to zero, then the function is undefined. So we're going to set the denominator equal to zero and solve for x. Okay, so we have x minus five to quantity squared. Let's let's expand this. X squared minus ten x plus twenty five. You can use the shortcut formulas. Our shortcut formula is a minus b to quantity squared is equal to a squared minus two times a b plus b squared and if if you're expanding the sum of two binomials then a plus b squared will be a squared plus two times a b plus b squared here our a term is x and b term is negative five or you can multiply x minus five times x minus five but this is going to save a lot of time. Plus, four, we're going to distribute this. 4 times x is 4x, and 4 times 5 is 20, plus 4 equals to 0. Let's simplify. OK, we have x squared here. We have 10x minus 4x is negative 6x. And then we have 25 minus 20 is 5. and 5 plus 4 is 9 equals to 0. Now we need to find the value of x. So we need to factor this out. So we need to find two numbers such that multiplies 9 and adds up to middle term negative 6. It is negative 3 times negative 3 because it gives me the c term which is positive 9 and it gives me the d term which is negative 6. So negative 3 is the correct number, correct pair. And here x equals to positive 3. Because x minus 3 is equal to 0. From here x equals to 3 plus 0, which is 3. So if the value of x is 3, then the function is undefined because it makes the denominator 0. So you're going to go to your answer sheet, 
and then you're gonna write here three for that specific question part and bubble entry so you will be given separate sheet and then question number so you're gonna go ahead from there question number 37 what's the value of x in the expression Jessica opened a bank account that earns 2% interest compounded annually her initial deposit was $100 and she uses the expression this is the expression to find the value of the account after t years What's the value of x? Here we are going to interpret the general function. General function for compound interest a equals to p times 1 plus r over n to the nt a equals to p times 1 plus here r is the rate interest rate which is two percent and two percent is expressed in decimal is 0 0.02 and n is the number of the compound here number of the compound is annually means once a year and then n was one and t was t is t for t years because it's given in variable so our interest is in this question what this number is because the corresponding part of this is here in the x because in exponential function initial times the growth rate to the time so in the annual interest function this is our growth rate so 0 0.02 divided by 1 is represented by x here so our answer is 0 0.02 so you're gonna go to your answer sheet that specific question 0 0.02 you're going to bubble 0 you're going to bubble point zero and 2 on your answer sheet okay let's see the last question Jessica's friend Taishun found an account that earns 2.5% interest compounded annually. Taishun made an initial deposit of $100 into this account. At the same time, Jessica made a deposit of $100 into her account. After 10 years, how much more money will Taishun's initial deposit have earned than Jessica's initial deposit? Round your answers to the nearest cent and ignore the dollar sign when creating your response. So here we're going to make two functions, one for Jessica, one for Taishun. And then compare their income. So annual rate, they both deposited $100 and Jessica's bank is giving 2.5%, which means 1 plus 2.5% which means 1.025 no this is her Taishan is 1.25 I mean her function will be 100 1.025 because this is 2.5 percent and Jessica's giving 22% which is 1.02 after 10 years after 10 years so this is how you're gonna set up the equation and here this is 1 plus 2 percent which is 1.002 and this is 1 plus 2.5 percent which means 0.025 now you're going to find this number using your calculator. You're going to raise 1.02 to the 10th power and then multiply by 100. Likewise, you're going to raise 1.025 to the 10th power and multiply by 100. So let's do that. 1.02 raised to the 10th is this number times 100. So Jessica makes 
90 cents so this is the close first let's let's use normal cents and then in the end 1.21899 1.21899 the other girl makes 1.025 raised to the 10th power times 100 and this girl makes 128.008 128.008 128.008 so let's see how much this girl makes more than that so that minus 128.008 899 so this girl makes six point eleven six dollars eleven cents so you round your answer in the end or else your answer will be wrong so the trick of this question is this so if you do the subtraction this number minus that number you're gonna get six point eleven cents which means six dollars eleven cents and then you have to go to your answer sheet and you're going to write, let me use as a sample here, you're going to write 6.11, So that's it for this part. We finished section four. So we completed one full test. So let's see on test two. Good luck.